Okay, and just to speak to anyone that um, may be joining yoga to the people for the first time, this is a power vinyasa sequence meant to be all levels. And what makes it all levels is just that you can take a break anytime you want. So um, I will never know what you're going through. So please take really good care of yourself and take breaks when you need to and work hard when you can. So I'm gonna give it about one more minute just to make sure anyone that wants to come on, wants to come on and then we'll get started. Yay. Thanks, Kathleen. Thanks for being here. Okay. I think we will slowly start moving into class. So like I said, take good care of yourself, take breaks when you need to. And this posture we're about to start with is one you can always take a break with. And like with all yoga to the people classes, we always start in child's pose. So go ahead and make your way to the mat. Child's poses, hips on the heels, forehead to the mat. And you can have lots of variations with the knees. They can be close together or wide apart, but you wanna prioritize your forehead to the floor. So if your forehead doesn't quite touch the floor, you might spread your knees a little bit wider to accommodate a little bit more room. And then once you get down there, your arms can be out in front of you, palms facing down, or maybe back by your hips, palms facing up. It's a really nice low back opener if you've never tried that version of it. But whatever arm variation you choose this morning, just gently bend your elbows and let them fall to the mat so you can totally relax your shoulders, let your body just melt into the floor. See if right away you can let go of the jaw, the back of the teeth, that little place between your eyebrows. And just start to notice what it feels like to live inside of your body this morning. Maybe noticing your heart beating, your blood pumping, your thoughts. And the most important part about a yoga class is to try your best to breathe intentionally throughout the class. Just doing the postures without an intentional breath is kind of like a workout, but yoga is marrying the two. Breath, movement, body, maybe even a little bit more. So take a second to really be intentional with your breathing. Just by lengthening the inhales, maybe pushing it out and exaggerating the inhale, searching for that rise in the back body. Good. And as a group this morning, wherever you are in your breath cycle, just exhale all of the air out of your body. Try to get really empty. Shh. Inhale through the nose, drink the air and feel the back body rise. Side body expands out to the side of the room. Hold it at the top, feel what it's like to be full, and then open the mouth, sigh it out. Relax that jaw and keep exhaling, maybe even more than before, get really empty. Hold it at the bottom to feel empty. And then inhale through the nose, fill yourself up new air, new energy, new prana. And when you feel ready, you open up the mouth, sigh it out. And then find your breathing on your own, in and out through your nose as best as possible. And start to find a little bit of movement in your child's pose with this deep breath. So maybe that's a rocking of the forehead from side to side, kind of ironing out those little wrinkles on your forehead. And then you let it trickle down your spine into your hips. The movement can be big or maybe so small you just feel it, no one would even see it. Good. 
and then slowly pick yourself up into tabletop, nice and slow. Take a second to firm up the shape. So the difference is if you were to drop your belly, you might feel the body fall down, but you really want to push the mat away to support the spine. Tops of feet down. Here's where we start to marry the movement and breath. So inhale, reach the heart forward and up, lift the tailbone, look up with your eyeballs, but lengthen from behind the neck. And then exhale, push the floor away, tops of feet down, belly button to ceiling. Inhale, reach forward up, lengthening the spine, collarbones forward, look up with your eyeballs, but relax your forehead. And then exhale, belly button to ceiling, spread those shoulder blades away from one another, drop head in. And then take that on your own. Whatever your breath is, you can go quickly or slowly. You can make little circles with the ribs or even curl the toes under, roll the head, whatever feels good. But especially as we start class, I really recommend making the exhales a priority, like <sighs> exaggerating the exhales because you can't fill yourself up with new air and new energy until you first empty out the old stuff, the old air. So focus on those exhales. You can even curl the toes under, whatever feels good. And if you want to stay here for a little while, that's fine. Otherwise, start to make your way into a moving downward facing dog. That's hips high, head heavy, heels low. Down dog. So just move it around. Don't worry about the shape so much. You can bend one knee and straighten out the other leg. You can shake the head. You can hop a few times. Whatever feels good to you. Rolling the shoulders, maybe even fluttering the lips. <clears throat> Keeping out any extra tension. And then let's slowly start to clean it up. So as you glance at your feet, make sure they're about hips width distance apart, maybe like an iPhone's distance apart. And then for a second, bend your knees and lift your hips up. And if you look at the screen, you notice how by bending my knees, it lengthens out the spine. For some, having straight legs creates this rounding sensation. And you really want to focus on the length in the spine. If you can keep this length, then lift up on the fronts of your thighs and maybe start to straighten the legs. Drop that head heavy. Take a second to let the pose work on you. And then gently bend the knees again. If they're not already, look towards your hands and slowly walk to the front of your mat. Forward fold. Find a hip width distance with the feet. Measurement approximately two fists right between the feet. Bend your knees again, drop head heavy, and grasp for opposite elbows to start. And sway a little side to side, forward and back. Maybe you straighten one leg and bend the other, getting into the hamstrings. And when you bend your knees like this, you give your low back an opportunity to open up. Look, my kitty just came to say hello. I think she was jealous I was doing downward dog. Ha ha ha, I got jokes. <laughs> Drop the arms down. Start to straighten the legs a little bit more. Inhale, half lift, flat back. Hands above or below the knee. Pause here. You don't want your hands to ever be on the knees because they don't want to go backwards, right? So push your fingers into your shins or thighs to reach your heart more forward. When your exhale comes, let it go. You can bend the knees or straighten the legs. A little swifter now. Inhale, half lift, shoulders back, ears forward. Exhale, let it go, deep exhale. Inhale, full, slow inhale, weight in the toes. Exhale, let it go. Next inhale, reach forward through your half lift. Come to standing in mountain pose. Good, let me adjust this camera, good. So hands about shoulder width distance apart. Right away, relax your shoulders down, which is not the same thing as pushing them down. Energetically, stamp your heels down and feel the energy flow from your heels up the back of your spine and out the top of your head. It's very subtle, but think belly button up rather than back to lengthen your low back out a little bit. And I can't see everyone's screen, but for the ones I can see, it looks like all of us can stand on two legs today. So just take a second and remember that that's something to be so grateful for right there. 
Reconnect to that deep, calm breath if you can. And open your eyes if they're not already. Let's take a little heart opener. So hips a little bit forward. Lift up from behind the heart. Stretch the whole front body, maybe even open through the throat glands back. And on your exhale, break the posture, forward fold. Inhale, half lift, reorganize that spine. Deep, full inhale. Exhale, let it go. Inhale, reach forward and up into that mountain pose right away. Hips forward, lift up from behind the heart. Lift up and out of the base of your spine. And on your exhale, let it go. Take that half lift in between to keep reorganizing the spine. And then take that on your own three more times into your mountain pose. Use your inhale and your exhale. You can move at a different rhythm than everyone else. And let it go. And try to find that deep, calm breath. And if you ever feel a twinge in your low back as you take that back bend, think about not going back so far, but lifting up from behind the heart, up and out of the base of your spine, stretching from hips to armpits to fingertips. Good, Donna, that looks great. Yes, Kate, so beautiful always. And after your third time through, we'll meet in forward fold. No hurry at all if you're still moving. Yeah. Once you get in that forward fold, maybe walk out those hamstrings again. Make sure they start getting nice and warm. And then inhale, half lift, flat back. Find the integrity in your spine. Be really specific. Ears forward. Exhale, release. Bend the knees, plant the palms, step back. And pause in upper push-up plank. So that shoulders over wrists. Tuck your tailbone slightly so you really engage the core. Try to find length behind the neck, maybe looking a couple of inches in front of you. And right away, reconnect to your breath. This is meant to warm up the body. You are always welcome to bring your knees down as long as you keep that spine nice and strong, drawing the belly in. But if you're able, lift up those knees and see what happens if you stay. Whatever you practice in this yoga class, you will get better at it. So I hope it's not a silent kind of suffering. It's a strong choice to be here. Exhale the air out. Inhale, deep, full breath. Stay for an HA. Ha. One more inhale. Exhale, down dog, hips high, head heavy, shake out the head. Maybe boom, flutter the lips. That last posture is over. Now on your inhale, find upper push-up plank using your belly to get there. Exhale, down dog, squeeze that belly and drop head heavy. Bend your knees if you need to to keep the spine long. Inhale, upper push-up plank, draw the belly in. Exhale, down dog. Just one more. Inhale, upper push-up plank. Exhale, down dog. Wherever you are in your breath cycle, let's take an exhale. Exhale all the air out, anything you don't need this morning. Inhale from heels to hips to crown of the head. And sigh it out, open through that mouth. Ah. Inhale your right leg long. First find the leg and try to square up that right hip down towards the floor. And then when your exhale comes, bend the right knee and open up the right hip. It doesn't have to look anything like what I'm doing. You just wanna circle through the hip, maybe spread the toes. You can do this thing called flip the dog. Whatever works for you. It's just trying to get a little movement along that right side body. Anything. But most importantly, deep inhales, deep exhales. On your next inhale, find a little bit of a length with that leg, like you could kick the back wall away. And on your exhale, very slowly place that right foot down. So slow. Good. Inhale your left leg long. First, search for that length. Decide if you're going to point 
or flex the toes, but try not to be somewhere in between. Make a strong choice. And then on your exhale, bend the knee, open up left side body. Anything you want to do here. Your shoulders can be square to the mat or you can open them up. You can come up high on the toes of the right foot, whatever feels good. And especially if you're by yourself, maybe make some noise like ha, ah, hmm, <clears throat> whatever it is. Next, inhale, find that length in the left leg and then exhale, slowly lower down. Bend your knees, glance between your hands, gently walk or maybe hop this time to the front of the mat, forward fold. Find that hips width distance, be specific. Inhale, half lift, flat back. Exhale, release. Inhale, reach forward and up into your mountain pose. Stretch the whole front body from hips to armpits to fingertips. And on your exhale, forward fold, let it go. Take a really deep, full inhale to find your half lift. Really fill yourself up. Exhale, bend the knees, plant the palms, step back, pause, upper push up plank. So we're gonna set up what's called the flow, how we move in between postures at Yoga to the People. So start here by pushing the mat away. You can always bring your knees down if you need to. Exhale, lower down halfway. Keep the biceps right by the body, let it be a moment. And then inhale, heart forward and up. Tops the feet down so much so knees might lift off the mat, shoulders away from the ears. Exhale, roll through the toes, down dog. Or you can even bring your knees down to transition. If you've never done that before, no big deal. Remember, this is a practice, not a perfect. We'll do it many more times. Inhale, right leg up. Exhale, slowly step it through. If it doesn't quite get there, you can use your hands to get your foot between your hands. Drop back heel down. Reach forward and up, warrior one. So take a second to just settle in. The right knee should be over the right ankle. It's just less work on the joints when you stack them on top of each other, less work on the muscles, I mean. Take a second to pause. How can you use your intuition to square off your hips? So think right hip, maybe a little bit back, left hip forward. It's less important that you actually square off your hips and more important that you just have that intention within the body. Draw belly button up to lengthen that low back. Relax the shoulders. Fingers alive. Can you relax something in your face? Sit a little bit lower if you can. And on your next inhale, lift your heart up, maybe glance back away from your hips. And on your exhale, bring your hands down, step back and travel through that flow. Starting an upper push up plank, weight a little bit forward, you lower down. In your upward facing dog, even lengthen behind the neck and then find down dog. Now inhale your left leg long and slowly step your foot between your hands so that you use your strength rather than momentum to get it there. Back heel down, forward and up very slowly to come into the posture. The way in which you get into the posture really matters. Good. Take a second to notice any differences between left side and right side. How can you imagine squaring off your hips, even your shoulders to the front of the room? Pay close attention to if there's a big arch in your low back and try to draw your belly button up. Press the pinky toe side edge of your back foot into the mat to help you fire up that right leg. Relax the back of your teeth and their forehead. Couple more seconds here to receive the benefits of warrior one. Sit a little lower if breath allows, and then lift up out of the base of your spine to glance back, hands down, step back, and travel through your flow. As you lower down, keep your biceps right by the body. Good, and keep going. One breath, one movement. Warrior one right side, warrior one left side. And remember the most important thing you can do in this class is breathe intentionally. It doesn't matter what this pose looks like. It matters what they feel like. So try not to like muscle your way through. Try to really find almost like an ease, like you're floating through the postures. 
it's still strong, but easy feeling, right? Light and strong. And if your breath ever gets stuck, it's a good moment to let out a sigh or flutter the lips. <clears throat> Good. For those still moving, keep moving. For those in down dog, let's reconnect to the breath. So exhale your air out. Inhale, slow, fill yourself up. Open the mouth, side out. Good. Now, just to break some habits, inhale your left leg long. So we're starting on the left side, not the right. Exhale, step it through. Drop back heel down. Inhale, reach up warrior one. And then expand open warrior two. That's left arm forward, right arm back. So you might have to take a bigger stance in warrior two than you did in warrior one, which means walking that left foot a little forward. Now you want to keep the front knee over the ankle so it doesn't splay in towards the side of the room. You want to draw it back over the ankle. Good. Arms really strong if you can get them there. Lift your ears up to lengthen out your entire spine and look over your front palm, maybe glancing over your middle finger. Find one point of focus or just close the eyes. And here's where the real magic happens in yoga for me. You are not your mind. And there's typically a moment where your mind wants to get out of the posture before the body even needs to. See if you can breathe instead. Let the pose work on you which means maybe staying even when you want to leave. Find your breath. Firm up the thighs. Leave the heels where they are, but squeeze them in towards one another. Exhale the air out, gentle. Inhale slow, fill it up, energize the arms, and stay for an HM. Mm, sit a little lower if you can. One more deep inhale to energize the posture. And then on your exhale, cartwheel the arms down. Feel the stretch on right side body. Step your left foot back and travel through that flow. Good. On your inhale, reach the right leg long behind you. Silently step your foot between your hands. Rotate back, heel down. Inhale, slow forward and up. Warrior one, try not to be in a hurry. Exhale, open up. Warrior two. Clean up the stance if you need to take a bigger one. Arms strong. You might even glance at your back hand and make sure it is where you think it is in line with your front arm. Yeah, good. Lengthen from behind the heart. And I'm telling you, for like a year, I was looking at all these beautiful Instagram posts of people doing amazing postures. And I thought, i got to keep going to yoga so I can work on these amazing postures. Someday I can take a picture like that. But it's not about working on the postures. It's really about letting the postures work on you. It doesn't matter what it looks like. Who are you being for yourself? If breath allows, sit a little lower. If this posture is stealing your joy, maybe sit a little lower. <laughs> Exhale the air out. Very gently. Inhale through the nose, fingers alive. Stay for an HM and allow that HM to relax something in your face. One more deep, full inhale, fingers alive. Exhale, cartwheel the hands down. Step your foot back, travel through that flow. And then take this on your own, starting with the left side. Two times, one breath, one movement, warrior one, warrior two two times and take this as a moment to really own your practice so if you'd like to add in a couple postures along the way or stretches please do that this is a moment to move and breathe two times warrior one warrior two each side
And as I mentioned earlier, I will never know what you're going through. So please take such good care of yourself. This yoga is not a punishment. It's a moment to really get to know yourself. Listen to the body. There's a difference between hurt so good and hurts, right? You never want it to hurt. So try your best to just breathe deeply and move intentionally. Good, I even see a child's pose on the screen. That's an excellent choice. So in this moment, it's meant to get the heart rate up. After you've taken this two times through, we'll meet in child's pose, a really specific child's pose. Yeah, so for those already setting, settling into child's pose, maybe it's shifted. Maybe your knees can be closer together now, or maybe you want them spread wider apart. It's up to you what would feel good in the body. And then as you settle into that child's pose, once again, bend the elbows, let them fall to the floor. Whether the arms are out in front of you or back by your hips, it doesn't matter. Just try to make it a really restful child's pose. And take a second in this physical stillness to see if you can notice what's happening within the body. Do you feel your heart beating? Your blood pumping? Maybe your food digesting? Your brain thinking? Your feelings feeling? There's never really stillness, right? So now, Try to find a little stillness, which is not the same thing as trying not to move. Zero percent effort and a hundred percent effort are the same intention. So for many people in the world, we're being forced to rest in a certain way and not do some of the things we used to do. But taking a moment to really intentionally rest and lean into that is a good practice so that it becomes a little easier if you're like me and you like to do a lot of things. So in honor of a moment of intentional rest, exhale the air out of your body. Very gently, it doesn't have to be aggressive. Inhale from below the belly button, feel the side body expand, feel the back body rise, even feel the breath into your neck and the top of your head. And then open the jaw, sigh it out. Once again, start to find a little bit of movement in your child's pose. And without being in a hurry, maybe slower than you really may want to, find a downward dog in honor of practicing not being in a hurry. Maybe curling one toe under, feeling the forehead peel off the floor. And then take a moment when you finally get there to clean it up, spreading your fingers nice and wide, pushing into the first finger and thumb to take some pressure out of the wrist, drop your head heavy. Remember, a little bend in the knees might be helpful to reconnect with that long spine. And then slowly come up high on your tippy toes, bend your knees, and walk or hop forward to the front of the mat, forward fold. Make sure the outsides of your feet are in line with the mat. It could be slightly pigeon-toed. Inhale, half lift, flat back, weight forward into the toes to use the muscles of your legs. Exhale, release. And just like that, we're back to work. Inhale, hips low, arms up. This practice is also a good opportunity to notice if you bring like moments of rest into moments when you should be working, or maybe when you bring work into moments when you could be resting, right? Just interesting to notice. So check out your knees. They shouldn't be coming forward. You should draw them back over the ankles, which means you may not sit as low. 
My ego doesn't like that, but it's the posture, right? Belly up to support that natural curve in the low back. Sit a little lower if you can. And then on your exhale, break the posture. Drop the head heavy. Maybe even flutter out the lips. <clears throat> Interlace those fingers at the low back. Lengthen through the arms and draw the arms forward to the front of the room. Relax that head. Be gentle with your shoulders. Open them up. Maybe sway a little side to side. Try not to anticipate the fact that we have two more chairs, right? How can you be in the moment now? And then release arms down. Inhale without being in a hurry, hips low, arms up. So when I first started taking class at Yoga to the People, when I did this posture, I would say mean things to the teachers, like, what the hell's happening? I hate this, this is not possible, you idiot, blah, blah, blah. I was blaming it on them because I couldn't handle it, right? But then I finally learned that resentment is like swallowing poison and expecting the other person to die, right? So I had to just learn to deal with myself. And if you're having a terrible time, you don't have to sit so low, right? And if you wanna really strengthen the mind and the body and the spirit, maybe sit low, reach the heart high and stay and open through the back of the heart and think about something that you're really grateful for today. Relax the forehead, last couple of seconds. Sit a little lower if you can. Stay for three, two, slowly let it go. Let out an exhale. Deep, full inhale, reorganize that spine. Really reach the ears forward. Exhale, release. One more time, interlace those fingers. Notice what your first inclination was and switch the grip. So opposite finger on opposite finger. And then straighten through the arms, arms forward, open through those shoulders. You might shake the head, yes and no. Bend one knee and straighten the other to get into those hamstrings and low back. And maybe <sighs> relax that jaw. And then it's the last chair. Hips low, arms up. Try not to think about it too much, just be there. Remember, draw the knees back. Imagine there's a little paper towel between your feet and try to break it apart with your feet. Feel how that changes the energy. Check in with your low back. Don't try to overarch it too much. Draw the belly button up. Relax the shoulders. Reconnect with that breath. Slow down the inhales and exhales. A few more moments. Good, and then this time, slowly squeeze the legs to stand up tall. Take a second to bring your hands to heart center, maybe in prayer or just gently resting on the heart. Close the eyes, lift from behind the heart, stand tall, and maybe you feel your heart beating in your hands. Sometimes these postures like shake up the snow globe a little bit of your body it's nice to give it a moment to settle so that you can give your whole self to the next part of class. Maybe even bring to mind somebody in your life that really could have used this practice today. And take a second to maybe dedicate the rest of your class to them. Gently let the arms fall by the side. Feet about hips width distance. Drop the head down, bend the knees, draw the belly in and just slowly roll down one vertebrae at a time. A nice gentle half lift. Exhale, bend the knees, plant the palms, step or hop back. Travel through that flow, nice and slow to build strength within the body. Heart forward and up. Look up with your eyeballs, but relax your forehead. And then exhale down and down. Inhale, right leg long behind you, nice and slow and gentle. Exhale, step it through. Plug your back heel down. Inhale, forward and up, nice and slow, warrior one. Exhale, open up, warrior two. Make sure the stance is big enough. Stamp your heels down to fire up the legs. Flip your front palm to the ceiling. Inhale, reach right rib cage forward. Exhale, lift right rib cage up, away from right hip. So keep the knee over the ankle, keep the hip low and reach your rib cage up. Back hand, push it down to lengthen even left side body. You can glance up if neck allows or just keep it neutral. 
peaceful warrior. How can you lift your right rib cage up away from your right hip? Fingers alive. One more inhale here. Exhale, come back to warrior two. Sit nice and low. Take an inhale. Exhale, side angle, right hand down, left arm up. Push elbow into knee and knee into elbow. Keep sitting low and draw your left arm forward to the front of the room. Yeah, good. You might bring right forearm to right thigh for a little extra support if you need it. Or maybe bring your right arm up in line with left. But if you do that, bear will roll the right shoulder forward. Draw that belly in. Good. Stay sitting low in that front leg. Take a second to really breathe. You've got three. Two, one, bring the left arm up, down, right arm up. So revolve the twist. Try to really straighten out that back leg. You can keep the heel down or you can lift the heel up, but just make a really strong choice either way. Now think left hip up, right hip a little down, squeezing the inner thighs. Reach up like you can get your left rib cage to touch your right inner thigh, lengthen from behind the neck, Three, two, one. Bring your right hand down to the inside of your right foot. Back heel, back down. Left arm up, back into side angle. You can stay right here, or maybe you take that bind. Left arm behind the back. You can start by just grabbing at the crease of your leg. This is a half bind. Or maybe you bring your right hand underneath your thigh. Grasp for hands underneath your thigh. Pull your heart forward. Even for a second, try it. You can stay in half bind or even side angle. Lengthen the neck, open through the heart, open through the back of the heart, sit nice and low for three, find your breath, two, one. Unwind, bring your hands down, step back, travel through your flow. Some good news is we only have two sides of the body, right? <laughs> All right, inhale that left leg long. Exhale, gently step it through. Back heel down. Inhale forward and up, nice and slow. Exhale slow, open up warrior two. Keep it calm, arms alive. Sit low, flip front palm. Deep inhale, reach forward with left ribs. Exhale, lift right, left rib cage up. So less about how back you go, but how much lift you can find in length and left side body, searching for a stretch all along. Like on every inhale, you can stretch the muscles between every rib. Push that back hand down, maybe glance up, sit low. One more inhale here. Exhale back to warrior two. Take one inhale here. Exhale, left arm down, right arm up, side angle. Push the floor away with that hand. Open through the left hip. Maybe draw the right arm forward, stretching the right side body. You can always bring that left hand to your left knee, left forearm. Or maybe the left arm up for that core strengthener. But rotate that left shoulder forward, belly in. Sit low. Relax something in the face. Find your strength in the legs for three, two, one. Right hand down, left arm up. Squeeze those inner thighs. Lift your back knee up to the ceiling. Push the floor away to lengthen from behind the heart. One of my dance teachers used to say, what are you reaching for? And we'd all say, a better life. Three, two, one. Left arm down, right arm up. Come back into side angle. Good, if you want to take that bind, now it's right arm behind the back. You can pause right here, still sitting low. Or you can do the full bind with the left arm under the thigh. Or maybe just stay inside angle and breathe. Before you know it, this pose will just be a memory. Maybe then bring back to mind someone you might have dedicated the rest of class to. Find your breath. Three, two, one. Gently unravel. Put your hands down, step back, and travel through that flow. Good. 
Back in down dog. Take a second to shake the head from yes and no. Side to side, I mean. Good, then let's start to open through the hip. So inhale the right leg long. It's not half pigeon yet. Step your foot through, drop back knee down, top foot down. Check in with your knee and make sure it feels okay. You can always roll the mat over a couple times for a little extra support. You can keep your two hands here, or maybe interlace fingers at the front of the knee. Push the knee a little bit forward to lengthen the low back. If you know where you're going and you want more, there's tons of options. You can bring the arms up. You can interlace fingers behind the back. Only if you can really find the strength within the posture. So squeeze those inner thighs. Don't just fall into your flexibility. Shoulders down, ears lifted. Open through the front of that left hip. Yes, good, Kathleen. Great. Last couple seconds. And then hands down. And slowly walk your right foot over to the left side of your mat. We're going to find half pigeon. If you know where you're going, please feel free to go. If this is new to you, listen closely. You might be able to see on the screen. You really want your right knee to be on the outside of your hip. You don't want to do something like this. You want your right knee out so you can square off your hips to the floor. You might walk your left foot back a little bit to open through the heart. And then you can rest on hands just like this. Forearms, if you had a block or a book or a pillow, you could put your head on it. Or maybe you rest all the way down to the floor. No choice is better than the other. Good. You should be searching for that stretch on the outside of the right hip. If you have any pain in the knee, I recommend coming out of the posture a little bit to ease some of that tension. Or if it's really painful, you can find me after class. I'll be on here and we can talk about some ways to modify if you want to do it at home without us or next time you take our class. Good. So how can you just take a moment to drop your bones into the floor? I was reading this article this week about a Broadway performer that was hospitalized from the virus, as we all know. And some of the doctors were trying to teach the patients how to breathe. And one of the things the doctor said to him was, inhale, smell the roses, exhale, blow out the candles is how they were trying to communicate a deeper breath to keep the lungs healthy. So there's so many ways to focus on deep inhales and exhales, but they are really important. One breath I love that's been helping me through this day 36 of quarantine for me is inhale, I am, Exhale, okay. You might try that a few times in your head. Inhale, I am. Exhale, okay. Try your best to stay with stillness. Your mind will want to leave the posture. See if you can relax something again, that forehead, the jaw, a thought. And try to take three honest inhales and exhales. And after that third exhale in your own rhythm, find downward facing dog or any posture along the way that would feel good Sometimes even a child's pose feels good after half pigeon just to keep those hips opening up or even just to notice if one hip has changed. Yeah, or good, you just brought that leg up, Elena, that looks good. And then when you feel ready, 
Inhale that left leg forward. And if you're still moving at a different rate than us, no big deal. You'll meet us and you can even it out. Left leg forward, drop back knee down, uncurl the toes. Take a second to assess the difference between right and left, and then make a choice from there. The body's not symmetrical, so you don't have to do the same thing. Squeeze the inner thighs. Think left belly button up away from left hip, shoulders down. And then you make a choice from there. Maybe it's hands up in like a butterfly shadow puppet situation. Keep lifting from behind the heart, pushing your back foot down. Maybe hands behind the back. You can even open through the throat or hands at low back, whatever feels good. Keep squeezing those inner thighs, back foot down. Find your breath, opening through that right hip. I would say breathe into your right hip, but you can't. You can only breathe into your lungs. But imagine you could breathe into your right hip for three, two, one. Hands down, walk that left foot over to the right. Go where you need to go, but know that that front left shin could be parallel to the mat one day, or that left heel could be in front of the right hip. Both are healthy choices. So you really want to square off your two hips, lengthen your belly button forward, and hinge down. You can rest on elbows, hands, forehead, or even a pillow or a block or a book with that forehead. Again, assess the situation. Maybe right in the beginning, you wiggle the hips a little bit just to keep out any tension. And then you try to just let it all settle. You might notice what you're thinking about. A good moment to practice meditation. Just witnessing yourself. Maybe you're thinking about breakfast or coffee, or maybe you're thinking about something that already happened to you in the past, or maybe you're right here on your yoga mat, Zoom screen in front of you. And a good way to just come back to the present is to say something simple like, now I'm inhaling. Now I'm exhaling over and over again. It's okay if your mind wanders. The best thing you can do then is exercise the muscle of bringing it back to the present. That's the strength, that's the exciting part. When you notice that your mind has wandered, you should be like, yes, my mind wandered. Now I come back to the present. Now I'm inhaling, now I'm exhaling. Now take as many breaths as you need to, to feel even from left side to right side. Try not to cheat yourself. And when you feel even, you take as many breaths, like deep breaths. And then we'll meet in the last downward facing dog of class. Again, any postures along the way that would help keep those hips open and the energy flowing, go ahead and find them. And you've got opportunities. We've got five classes a day. So maybe you're taking another class today and I hope you do, why not? But if by chance this is the last time you'll take downward facing dog of class or for the day, find a way to say goodbye to it. That might be in walking it out or cleaning it up or just taking a really deep, compassionate breath for yourself. Good. And then bring your knees down slowly. Use your core to get them there. Find that tabletop like we had in the beginning of class and take a couple of cat cows here. Belly button up. Again, it doesn't matter what it looks like. Please feel free to add in any movement that would feel good. You might even flip the wrists so the fingers are facing you or you curl the toes under. It's a good counter stretch to what we've been doing and all the other postures. Um, down dog, what I was looking for. Good. And then now we're gonna take puppy pose in preparation for our big heart opener. So hips over knees. 
Keep them there. I think you can see me on the camera. And then walk your arms forward so far forward that armpits might touch the mat. You can bring your forehead down. Or you can bring your chin forward. Really deep inhales to encourage that spine to open up. Draw the belly in a little bit, protect it. And then very gently walk up, walk up so slowly. And then keep walking yourself up. Come to standing up on your knees. We're going to take camel pose. I've heard it called a back bend, but I prefer to call it a heart opener. So you don't hinge in your low back, you want to lift up and out. So feet right behind your knees, hips width distance, hands to low back. If you've done this a million times, please feel free to go into it so you can take a lot of time to open through the heart. But otherwise, set it up really carefully. Elbows squeeze together, hips a little forward. Rather than just hinging back, you want to lift your heart up away from your hips, lift your chin up away from your chest to open the front of your throat so you don't collapse in the back of your neck. You can pause here. Keep squeezing the elbows together. Or maybe you grab your heels, fingers on the inside, thumb on the outside. If you do grab your heels, lift your heart up so much so that if your hands were to slip, you would fly up to the ceiling. Keep staying in the posture. Press tops of feet down. Yes, Kate, gorgeous. Good, Stasia. I hope that's how you say your name. Looking good. Couple more seconds. Keep lifting up away from the floor. And then slowly come up, protect your low back along the way if the hands aren't there already. Sit your hips down. And for a second, curl your toes underneath you as you sit the hips down. This could be pretty intense on the feet. So maybe you bring your hands forward. So I'm curling the toes under, giving my feet a moment to stretch. You're welcome to sit back on your toes. Our feet carry us around all day and have lots of little nerves that affect the whole rest of the body. So just give it a second. We're gonna take one more camel. Let it settle. Uncurl the toes and gently come to stand up. It's an opportunity to keep your heart open, maybe when you don't know how, or just to stretch the muscles in the front of your chest. You can go as deep as you want. Hands to low back, hips forward. You can pause here or lift that chin up. Imagine there's a baby fence behind your neck and you lift up and over it, stretching the whole front body. Squeeze the elbows, open through the heart. Yes, Donna, beautiful. Try to stay soft. Don't let this world make you hard. And I've heard it said the moment you want to leave the posture is the moment it begins. Small breaths just for four. Three, keep lifting up. Two, one. Hands to low back if they're not already. Hips to heels. Don't curl the toes under this time. Just let them be relaxed. If you need to sit a different way, that's fine. If this hurts your knees, you can sit cross-legged. Just want to sit up nice and tall. Put your hands on your body somewhere that's meaningful for you. The forehead, the heart, the thighs, even out to the side, even up to the ceiling. Whatever feels really expressive and important to you. And just take a second to really thank yourself for doing something so good for yourself today. We can't really be there for others unless we're really there for ourselves. So acknowledge that maybe today you've created a little space to call somebody you love or just take more time for yourself if that's what you need. Good. Slowly bring your arms down or wherever they were, let them go. Bring your legs out long in front of you, any way that works for you. So we just stretched the front of the heart, now we're going to stretch the back of the heart. So legs long, walk the fleshy areas away from your sit bones if you want. That lengthens out the hamstrings. You can bend the knees even if you want to and just hinge forward. This moment is less about the legs and more about opening through the back of the heart. So drop your head heavy. Maybe you grab your feet and give yourself a little massage. Why not? And if you don't grab your feet, no big deal. You have a lifetime to get there. Yeah, good, Miriam. You might sway from side to side any way you are to open up that little back. Good. 
And then slowly drop your hands beside you, roll up one vertebrae at a time. Bring your bottoms of the feet to the floor, knees lifted, arms forward. And just slowly draw the navel into the spine and sway from side to side to open up the low back. It's a little bit of core, but more importantly right now, let's just focus on opening up that low back. Good. Lay the body down. Bring the knees into the chest. And give yourself a big hug. A really tight squeeze to start out with. I would say you deserve a hug after all this hard work, but nope, you always deserve a hug, right? And for some of us, this is the only hug we're getting today. So give yourself a big hug. I can't wait to hug someone someday. We can practice on ourselves, right? <laughs> so we don't forget how to hug. Okay, bring the soles of the feet together, interlace fingers around the pinky toe side edge, heels towards your knees away from you, butterfly pose. Keep the back of your head on the mat. You can pause here or if you want to, you open up to happy baby. Feet wider than knees, knees wider than hips. Kick the heels up, pull the knees down, sway from side to side. It could be playful. This is really not a serious practice, but it's definitely a very sincere practice. So maybe find a little bit of light. Open and close the jaw. And then take a second to slowly prepare yourself for final savasana. So that's legs out long. And just take a moment to trust that you've done enough in this hour and you can always do more later today but this is a good moment to lay down on your mat. This posture is very important. I'd like to believe one of the most important ones. So go ahead and lay down, let your toes flop open to the sides of the mat. You might walk shoulders underneath you a little bit to open the front of the chest. Arms can be by the body, palms facing up or maybe hands on either hip or one hand on the heart and one hand on the belly. Release the tongue from the top of the mouth. Let your eyeballs fall in their sockets. And let the floor hold you. This is a great opportunity to really receive the benefits of your yoga practice. I wanna take a moment to say thank you so, so much for taking class with Yoga to the People today online. Even though we can't be together in person, I think this is a great alternative. So I hope you keep coming back and I hope you keep spreading the word. Yoga to the People has always been donation-based and will always be. And right now is a really great opportunity to help out this yoga community if you are able. You can go to yogatothepeople.com slash donate and give if you can. Anything helps so that we can ensure that we're all back together in person someday. But it also helps just to keep coming to class or bring friends. The more we have on this community, you really feel the difference. Share on social media, anything helps. So take a second to relax the body. And as I mentioned, we have five classes a day. So Check out our website, yogatopeople.com, for more times. And I'll be here after class if you have any questions about anything during the sequence or anything at all. So I'm going to end class with a quote and a breath. Today's quote. is called Wild Geese. You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for 100 miles through the desert repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. Tell me about your despair, yours, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscapes, over the prairies and the deep trees, the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the wild geese, high in the clean blue air, are heading home again. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely, the world offers itself to your imagination, calls you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over announcing your place in the family of things. If you'd like to end with a final breath together, exhale your air out. 
Inhale from toes to belly, to crown of head, to fingertips. Open the mouth, sigh it out. And you're welcome to stay lying in Savasana, but if you're ready, you might bring a little movement to your fingertips, rolling the head from side to side, maybe a deeper breath. And it's often nice to roll on to one side of your body, push yourself up with your hands and come to seated. <laughs> 